Good evening, my friends. I have something else that's on my heart tonight that I want to share about surrender. Because I've learned a lesson in my life recently that I can't force things. Nothing can be made to happen. I just began to realize every day in my life that I wake up and, and my circumstances aren't, they're not under my control. My response to them is that they're not under my control. And for some reason, it really just hit home recently that I really have no control over my circumstances. And um, it seemed like an apt time to talk about the power of surrender because that's all we can do when we wake up in the morning and life happens. All we can do is just surrender. But I think I, I used to have a concept of surrender thinking that it meant kind of laying down and dying, like laying down and being a doormat for life. And that's not what it means. I've learned very much what it means to surrender. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. Because ultimately, we can... It, we can work, we can work really hard, we can do a lot of things, but we can't force an outcome. And that's what I just keep bumping up against, kind of like this repeatedly, is that I can't force any outcomes in my life. So, surrender, that's the path. And again, I think a lot of times people think of surrender as laying, a laying down, and there is a laying down in a sense, but it's also at the same time equally a picking up of our power, because Ultimately, that's all we can do. Control really is an illusion, and we cannot force any outcomes. Like, I mean, in any situation, my relationships are one, my marriage, my kids, um, myself, God, friends. Nothing can be forced. It just can't. I mean, you can try and try, but even with work, we do what we can but we don't control the outcome. Even if we try to control the outcome, it doesn't work. It never works in the end. So surrender then is, is understanding that when we wake up in the morning, life, we kind of have a day. And, and this could uh, this can apply to anyone just living their lives. Someone who is not, uh, so DNRS people and not DNRS people, people who are doing DNRS, this would be waking up in the morning knowing mm, you're going to have a day stuff's gonna happen and you're gonna have to deal and all of your power lies in how you respond to what comes up and in how you choose to pursue what you desire and that's really the two key pieces of power when it comes to surrender are what do you do with what's coming at you and what do you want because life is given to us I mean we have again to go with the DNRS example you're gonna have its and pops you're gonna have shit come up in your day, probably from your own brain. We don't know when it's going to happen. We don't know what's going to come up. But what we do have the power to do is how do we respond to what's coming up? And what do we want to create? And I'm going to use the language that resonates for me with this, which is pretty religious or spiritual language. And I'm pretty sure it'll translate if you can just listen with the ears to hear what this sounds like for you based on your life and your beliefs and so on. <clears throat> Run with it. But for me, um, surrendering to God is both it's kind of like giving his power back to him and then at the same time picking up the power that I have to make a choice in every moment. And life happens. We have no control over those outside circumstances. We have no control over what other people say to us or do or think about us or how they feel about us. That's none of that's under our control, which is a lot easier said than done <laughs> to really cut those ties. But that's the power of surrender. That's why it's so potent because when we actually succeed in cutting ties to caring about other people's volition, their ability to act and their choices and their emotions, we get our power back and that's incredible. So the power of response, how do we respond to what our brains bring us, what other people bring us, what our day happens to bring, did this go, did this work out this way? Did this happen this way? How do we respond? And at the same time too, what is it that we're looking to create? What mindset do you want to create? What life do you want to create? Who do you want to be ultimately? Because, and there's a quote about prayer that says, we don't pray so that God will change his mind. We pray so, to change ourselves. And that's ultimately what surrender is, is this understanding that we can't 
control our lives, but we can control or build up ourselves. And ultimately our life is designing us, kind of, not really the other way around. Our life circumstances are designing us. They're creating whoever we are by our choices, the way we respond. It builds up a person. And if we know who we want to be, we can create a, a way of being. We can create a self that's designed exactly how we want and how we respond to our everyday, everyday circumstances. So if we wake up every day and there's these kind of similar challenges that face us every single morning and things aren't shifting and things aren't changing, we still have a choice. We have a choice to be resilient. We have a choice to say, I choose to be in my life and to live my life, no matter how difficult that is, no matter how much effort it takes to say, I want to be here in my life. I choose to show up in every moment and to give every moment everything I have. And I'm not in control of the outcome. And I'll give it everything I have day in and day out. And I know that I don't control the outcome. But in the midst of that, we get to live. We get to be alive. We get to experience our life. And that's, that's the gift of life. That's everything right there. So that's, it's so powerful. But this is also where having an idea of what we want comes into play. Because as much as we can't orchestrate our life events or outcomes, we can have a picture in mind of who we want to be because we understand too that our power isn't to control our lives but to influence them. And when we are people of power, people of presence, and people of purpose, that's going to impact the way our life plays out. We know that. It, it influences things. We can't control things, but we can have a profound influence on them. So that's the second piece is having this idea in mind of what is it that you want to create in your life. And not necessarily like, I want a relationship, I want this job, I want um, this particular outcome for my kids, their schooling or their lives or whatever, but more, what experience do I want to create? What experiences do I want to be having as a human person? Do I want to be having joy? Do I want to be having peace? Do I want to be having productivity? Do I want to be having purpose? Do I want to be having love and connection? And when we create an openness in our own hearts and a surrender to what is in this moment, it allows those things to flow through us and life flows much better and in a direction that is pleasant and ultimately what we want. But it's a matter of letting go a lot, a lot of times of the specifics of what we want and accepting what is and finding that what we want is really just what's here, what's in front of us, what's been here all along. And one of the things that is part of this, this is kind of related to following your heart because the video I made about following your heart because it's a matter of understanding the power of the present moment. The present moment is everything. This was a power I learned very early on in my recovery, but each moment is like a hammock. In each moment, like we have in our minds, especially if you're a limbically healthy person, well, actually, honestly, I think any person, we have this idea that there is reality like this is what happens this is how life works this is how i work this is who i am this is what happens inside of me if this happens then this is what how i feel or this is what i think or this is my experience in this circumstance but the power all lies in this the tininess of the moment and this incredible 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 power of the nanosecond that in each moment we have a choice in each moment with enough awareness of our own internal landscape, with enough awareness of the fact that, <laughs> as cliche as it sounds, I'm thinking of a, was it Natasha Bedingfield? There's a song called Unwritten, and the singer is female. She talks about how her life is unwritten, and it sounds really cheesy, and it sounds really cliche, but it's actually true. All the, cleasy, the, the cheesy cliche things are actually true, and... The beautiful thing is in each moment, it's like a hammock that's also like a diving board. Like if we have the awareness and understanding that in every single moment we're making a choice. A lot of times it's unconscious and this is the power of free will and this is why surrender is such a dynamic thing because in every moment you're taking whatever you're getting, whether it's from your own brain or from your life, and you're applying your free will to it. And this requires, this is why in, for DNRS people, this is why we have to take such careful attention to all of our core beliefs. What are our core beliefs? What are, what are this, what's the subconscious programming running inside of us? 
when we have that awareness, we can then access an understanding of, okay, I'm running on this belief right now, or I'm running this program right now, but is that really the one I want? And if I were, if I actually believed something else, how would I be acting? For me, one of the things I've been working on recently is believing that I'm worthy of love, believing that I'm worthy of abundant love, more than enough, not just like uh, enough to squeak by, but like actually enough, like enough love that I just feel fine all the time. I feel amazing all the time because yeah, that's, that's actually normal in order to take care. Well, yeah, I'm not going to get into it, but that's the belief that I've been working on. And so it, there are times where I realize that my actions are running on this subconscious program of I'm supposed to have scar scarcity. I'm supposed to feel less than I'm supposed to feel like I don't quite have enough because that's a program that's been running for almost my, pretty much my entire life. And as soon as I recognize that I can start acting and moving into this space of pushing into this belief and the surrendering part comes in from believing, really believing that we're worthy. And, and in a sense, for me, believing that God is there to catch me, that's been a huge part of this. Surrender is leaning into acting in a new way and believing in ourselves and believing in the power of God within us that we can choose a different path and leaning into that in every moment, kind of surrendering what is, laying down what is there and picking up what could be and choosing to have what could be as this is what I choose to be here. Like, I choose to let go of what I've had in the past, this way of being that didn't really serve me. And I choose to see, like, this other available. It's almost like a, a menu. I always call it, talk about, like, a, a cosmic menu. You can pick anything you want, which is true. And you pick up a different belief. It's like, I could have this. I choose to believe that this is already mine because I want it. And go after that way of being. And... So surrender is this thing where it's like you're willfully putting all that you are into God's hands in every single moment and just it's like a continuous trust fall, which takes a lot of volition, a lot of will. You have to take all that you are and put it into the joy of the moment, put it into the work you're doing, put it into your heart in this moment and just trust that the thing you want is somewhere down the line. Because again, we don't we aren't in control of outcomes, but we can do the work. And then there's just this kind of like, okay, and now I'm going to see what happens and keep doing it and see what it is I need to learn and where kind of, what does God have for me in all of this? Because yeah, that's all, that's all there is. But yeah, surrender is just such a, because uh, one of the things too about surrender is it's kind of the answer to a game I don't play anymore, but I used to play, and I think it's a common human game of, like, the tug of war between the past and the future, you know? The, well, in the past, I did this and it worked. And then, but what about this thing? What's going to happen in the future? Am I going to have this? Am I going to have that? And when we surrender to the moment and choose to find our satisfaction in putting all that we are into God's hands by following our heart in every moment... we find our satisfaction and peace in this moment. We come back, we kind of, it's like falling out of your head and into your life is what it feels like when you begin to live that way. And, and the battle in your mind just, it, it disappears. And you arrive in your life, in your body, in the moment, like here. And this experience of being alive, which is what life is all about. I guess that is kind of the answer in a sense too, is that that's that's what we're here for is to experience life, to experience being alive, being human, being in a body, in a life with nature and people and beauty and, and joy and things around us. That's part of the point of life. So yeah, again, this is another one that's just been on my heart. This just surrender to what is, surrender to what can be, and the power of letting go of the illusion that we have control over outcomes and finding out what is what's waiting for us when we surrender knowing full well that we were never in control to begin with and this is the other option yeah i hope this is balm to someone's heart that's all i could ever hope for much love to you, my friends. <laughs>